Hello and welcome to my homeschool poetry resources video. My name is Rebecca. I'm a homeschool mom of two, ages 11 and 9. We implemented Tea Time Tuesday poetry readings years ago through Read Aloud Revival's podcast and then obviously originating with Julie Bogart at Brave Writer. The idea is you prepare something special to eat and drink. In the beginning, before my kids liked tea, it was literally a little teacup of milk and then whatever treats we had on hand. And it was very simple. Sometimes it was literally what I could get together, which was a Hershey kiss and some chocolates, or it could have been healthy. We did some ornate fruit designs. It really could be whatever you can pull together that is special. You can choose anywhere to eat. Sometimes, again, we just eat at our normal place settings. Sometimes we would move into the dining room and sit at the table. Sometimes we would put a blanket on the floor. It just kind of depends, but whatever it is to make it special. And I wanted to share over the years our favorite poetry resources. So the two that I have for resources is R is for Rhyme, a poetry alphabet written by Judy Young and illustrated by Victor Yuhas, and the Tea Party book, by Lucille Recht Penner, illustrated by Jody Wheeler. This, we just loop through. So every time we have a Tea Time Tuesday, we just read a page. So what I like is it goes through the whole alphabet and it starts with A and it does acrostic. So it gives you an example of the acrostic and then it explains what an acrostic is. And it has these, this is Lewis Carroll and Alice for whom he wrote the stories. You can see all the doodling. And then it has B for ballad, and it goes all the way through free verse, haiku, iambic, jingle. It has, it goes all the way through the entire alphabet with pictures, examples, and explanations. And it's just a great way to learn about the structures and different types of poems. And then the Tea Party book. I got this when I was first starting out, so I think moms of younger ones this would be most helpful for. It gives you different ideas for different kinds of teas. So this would be great for organizing birthday parties. I mean, I know there's Pinterest and you can find a lot on there, but if you want to do a teddy bear tea party, it's got teddy bear cookie recipes, placemats, so you can do crafts and it goes all the way through. We actually did a Valentine tea and invited some friends over and did that one. So it just does a whole different kind of theme of tea parties with recipe ideas. I'm probably gonna say this a lot, but these are my favorite resources for poetry tea time. The first one is A Child's Calendar. The poems are by John Updike. So this is each month, and we just open it up, so like we just read through January. Every year we come back to this, and we love it. I, When the kids were little, I had them close their eyes and imagine the tree's black lace, and why would the person be seeing that? If you look up at the sky, the, tr the black parts of the tree look like lace. So it goes all the way through. We just love it so much. I mean, even just something as simple as this, my kids were like, well, why does the baby have a long tail and the adult sheep don't? And so we went down this rabbit trail of figuring out why that is the way that it is. It actually is correctly illustrated. It goes all the way through the whole year. This is my absolute favorite. This is A Time to Keep by Tasha Tudor. And she also does the months of the year. So we start with January. She just goes through every month what it is that they would do in the old time. And we have taken a lot of ideas. So here in September, they have a doll fair and we have started to do a doll fair where we pay for things with buttons. I know people who go out and have a lighted nativity out in the woods. So these are all, here's their maypole. So I love Tasha Tudor's illustrating and I love to open this up each month and go through this with the kids. Year at Maple Hill Farm by Alice and Martin Provinson, very well-known illustrators. So it goes through the entire year of what happens each month on the farm. We love the illustrations. 
we love the the words and since we live in the country we can relate a lot to what is happening in the pictures this is outside your window a first book of nature by nicola davies illustrated by mark harold these are done with collages and textiles so they're not all drawn there you can you can tell that is paper that has been cut and pasted over top of and maybe like a pastel drawing so just a lot of mixed media it has all the seasons so it's got spring summer autumn and winter and we just kind of flip through it we're in winter right now so we go to that back and we just read what is there for the winter they some of them feel a little bit more like prose than poetry but we love going through this every month these are what I would call an, an anthology. So these are poems that have been selected and chosen by an editor. This is called Piping Down the Valley's Wild. And then it is organized by space, weather, silly, fall, spring, birds. And you can actually look in the back. It has the actual poem names. This is the poems with the authors, or you can look at the beginning part of what the first line is. It has an index of the first line, and it also has an index of authors and titles. So very well organized, and you can just choose, okay, we're gonna be studying the moon. And so you go into this section and you find all of the moon poems and read those. And it pairs really well. If you're going to have that full moon tea, then you can find the moon poems in here and read it while doing a party like this. This is called A New Treasury of Children's Poetry. The editor for this is Joanna Cole. This is a discarded library book from our area. Same idea, where it is a whole bunch of different poems for childhood, silly, animals, these are holidays, so if we have holidays, you know, for Valentine's Day, I will find the Valentine's Day one and go to that and read it. I have it tabbed for holidays, so I can just go right to it and I just flip through it. This one has riddle rhymes with the answers upside down. It's just a really great anthology. This one I also found used, so it's missing the dust jacket. One of my favorite parts of this one is the illustrations. So this has the same organization of here's nursery rhymes, here's poems for when you get older, classic poetry, and then it just has lovely illustrations. It's the reason why I love this one so much. It's got this picture one. I just love the artwork. Cat in the dark. Do not disturb the dinosaur. So just a fun thing. These are not as thick as those previous anthologies, but they are a similar idea. So this anthology is just arithmetic in verse and rhyme selected by the Jacobs and it's all math poems. So this has always been fun. And these are kind of riddles too. You know, when do polar bears have 12 feet? When there are three of them. So that's fun to do. This is poems for children. There's an editor that has chosen this and Gyo Fujikawa has illustrated it. I love Gyo Fujikawa as an illustrator so much. So we just read through these as well. There's really famous ones like this, the Gingham Cat and the Calico Cat by Eugene Field who wrote Wink and Blink and a Nod. Here's Edward Lear. So this is Thomas Hood with Queen Mab, Lewis Carroll, Wordsworth, lots of famous ones. This one is Poetry Speaks to Children. It comes with this DVD. So it's got Emily Dickinson, Robert Frost, Roald Dahl, Lewis Carroll, and Rudyard Kipling, J.R. Tolkien, Langston Hughes, Shakespeare, Jane Yolen. And it also has some modern ones. Every Time I Climb the Tree, some people of color poems. Then I have another Tasha Tudor. This one is The Springs of Joy. This one is mostly because of the Tasha Tudor illustrations, but it does have some, a little bit of prose and poetry. This one is by David Th Henry David Thoreau. And also we have goats, so it's like so great. Bernard Shaw, Mark Twain, Socrates. I mean, it just has little quotes, but we read this one obviously, in the spring. The last section is poetry by specific authors. So I have this very old vintage A.A. A. Milne who wrote Winnie the Pooh. When we were very young, 
This is his poetry and the same person who illustrated Winnie the Pooh illustrated this. It's not one that we read frequently, but we do like to open it up when we want to really think hard about poetry. This is one of my favorites. I love Susan Jeffers. She illustrated Robert Frost's Stopping by Woods on a Snowy Evening. It's got this lovely vellum dust jacket and gorgeous illustrations. We read this one when we did our tea time today, actually. We have this poem memorized, so we just review it by pulling this out in the winter and looking at the pictures and reading through it just to remind us of the poem. And if anyone is curious about how we do poetry memorization, then leave it in the comments below and I can do a video about how we do that as well. But we incorporate memorizing poetry and scripture in our morning time. And one year, this was the one that we did during this season in our morning basket. This is a very famous one. Robert Louis Stevenson wrote A Child's Garden of Verses. I love Jesse Wilcox Smith as an illustrator. We have some of these memorized as well, but we like to be able to read them and look at the illustrations. These three are so fun. Jack Perlutsky makes me laugh. This is Ride a Pel Purple Pelican. The pictures are by Garth Williams. He is the one who illustrated Little House on the Prairie series so just a lot of rhyming and silliness and this is one of my favorite poetry resources for geography because he always finds a place a white cloud floated like a swan high above saskatchewan the cloud turned gray at 10 past noon it rained all day in saskatoon so then your kids are like what's saskatoon so then we can go and look it up on the map how many times have I said this is a favorite, but we read this so much when my kids were little. They loved the rhyming. It was funny. So here's Edward Lear himself for his Edward Lear alphabet. This was written in, so it looks like 1840s. O was once a little owl. Owly, prowly, howly, owly. Brownie, fowly, little owl. He does that with every letter of the alphabet. And of course, the illustrations are phenomenal by Carol Newsom. Arnold Lobel, famously known for Frog and Toad. He also did a lot of other really great things. He's got little poems with this cat character and it just makes us laugh. This is me, my kids say. Books to the ceiling, books to the sky. My piles of books are a mile high. How I love them, how I need them. I'll have a long beard by the time I read them. Another great resource is the Scholastic Poetry for Young People. They have them for so many different poets. We have the one for Shakespeare. And it just pulls out some of the poetry within his plays. But I know they have these for a lot, you know, Robert Frost and a lot of other poets as well. This is the only one that we have, but our library has a lot of other ones. And lastly, these are more oriented towards an older student. So this is Emily Dickinson's Collected Poems. I will say we have memorized some Emily Dickinson and they, some of hers are manageable. Here, this is the one we have memorized. The morns are meeker than they were. The nuts are getting brown. The berry's cheek is plumper. The rose is out of town. We wear, read this and review it every fall. So she's got lovely seasonal poems. This one I found used, and we have not used it very much. This is a selection of stories and poems by Rudyard Kipling. Rudyard Kipling wrote The Jungle Book. So here's some of the poems that's in it. This is a lot of short story, but you can find some poems in here. The last two are Shel Silverstein. To be honest, we haven't read these that much with my kids while they're young. I do think Shel Silverstein is a little bit more appropriate for older age. Some of his poems can be crude, but I think there's a lot of humor in there as well. So I think you just need to be discerning about what it is that you want to read to your kid. But we do have both of these for when the time comes. Thanks so much for watching. Hopefully this has inspired you to maybe try to pull in some poetry. It doesn't need to be fancy or highbrow. It can just be very simple and fun loving. And the main thing is building relationships through developing memories with your kids. Until next time.